Merkle models are used to simulate flow through porous media. The, the, the experimental device is something very much like a microscope slide, a piece of glass that is etched with a particular structure in it. It's transparent. And so once it's etched, the um, top, a top piece of glass is put on. So you've got a thin um, structure that has pores in it and uh, can have fluid flowing through it. So we see here on the left a, an experimental device that has a micro model in it. The micro model itself is right in there. And you can see that the, the window on this is transparent so that uh, this micro model can be visualized during an experiment. Flow is put in in this side and there are two inlets for putting in two different types of materials so they can come in and mix in, in this particular example and then they go out here and if we zoom in on this micro model we can see that in this case it has this very regular geometric shape uh, it's these uh, cylinders that are um, a few tenths of a micron high and these are etched out of silicone and this is the pore space right in here in this case, we also have cylinders, but there are big ones and there are small ones right here. Uh, but this case is also an example of a very regular array of um, solid materials and a very regular uh, pore structure. And in this case, what you see is this uh, black material. These are bacteria colonies that are forming in the pore structure during an experiment. So some kind of a reactive fluid is put in there. It causes the bacteria to grow. And the real beauty of micromodels is that because they're transparent, you can view the processes that are occurring within the pores. So here is a picture of the design of the micromodel that we saw on the previous slide. This is the pore structure right here and there are two inlet ports and in this particular case this micro model is made to study the mixing and reactions that occur between two fluids that are put in in these two ports. It goes out and then the uh, outflow mixes here. This is a scale one centimeter and if you magnify this area the pores uh, look like this. These are the solid grains that's 300 microns across and the smaller one is 135 microns across and here is the dimension 40 microns there 180 microns from uh, one surface to the other surface of these larger grains so this gives us the dimension of the pores and the, the solid materials this is from a paper by Ustrom et al that was released uh, published recently and we'll use this as a basic model now in the paper, the model was made of this entire pore structure, but we're going to just take a smaller piece of this uh, structure and make the model of just a small representative section. We can make that model bigger and represent many pores, um, but for our purposes here, I want to show you how to set up this kind of model, uh, and we want to stick with a, a model that's relatively small and so it will run fairly quickly. So here's the initial model uh, that we'll set up. These are the solids, and you can see the pore structure here in the blue color. The, these are the specks. The large uh, grains have this diameter, small grains this diameter. This is basically from the paper that we just saw, the gap. And then I set it up so that the pressure on this face is uh, 1 pascal and the pressure on this face is 0 pascals. So we'll use uh, specified pressure boundaries. And here are some of the results. The color contours here are pressure. So it goes from 1 to 0. Here's the scale. And you can see that the contours are roughly um, straight here and uh, they're, they, they kind of cut through the pores and cut through the, the grains. The pressure gradient, however, um, is not uniformly distributed. This is the pressure gradient, 
and here's the scale in Pascal per meters. And you can see that through much of the pore structure, the pressure gradient is relatively small. But then right here at these pore throats where the, the diameter or where the gap, uh, the, basically the diameter or the, the, the gap, the width of the pore is smallest, that's where the pressure gradient is largest. So we have a um, very small pressure gradient throughout much of the pore structure and then the pressure gradient that we would see over or the, the pressure drop that we would see over this entire uh, experiment was, was really a result of pressure drops that occur over uh, several uh, localized areas. So that's somewhat of a different view than we get when we use the uh, homogenized view of a porous medium. So this is the velocity magnitude and you can see that the, the uh, velocities increase as you uh, reach these gaps, these small gaps between the grains and then the velocity drops here in the larger gaps. These zones right here are um, relatively low velocity zones. In fact, right in here it's uh, stagnant. And here in this plot, we see the velocities again. This is this, the corner of the plot that we just saw. And I've put the streamlines uh, on top of the velocities. And so in this case, I remove the velocities and we see just the streamlines. So we start off and we put uh, particles here uh, at this uh, inlet pore and you can see the path that they take uh, through the pore structure. You can also see this relatively dead zone where there are no paths and over here we can see that those areas match up with uh, regions within the pore structure that are uh, flowing at very low velocity.